Well, this week and next, we're taking you on a journey to Earth's frontiers. Today, it's at Madagascar, where scientists have set themselves quite a challenge. Their objective is to document marine life, and their sample size is the entire ocean. Well, Becky Anderson has the story. Our oceans contain some of the oldest life on our planet and some of the most endangered. With species disappearing every day, a group of scientists from opposite corners of the globe has set themselves the task of cataloguing the DNA of every form of life in the ocean before it's too late. From southern Madagascar, a cold region of fierce promontories, open bays and extensive algal belts, to England's North Sea. Their common goal is to better understand the abundance of life in our oceans, past, present and future, and use its DNA to create a barcode of life. Professor Philippe Boucher leads a team of scientists from around the world who have gathered here in Madagascar. He's dedicated his life to discovering unknown species. On this day, he thinks he's made an important discovery. It's really the catch of the day. Not immediately identifiable with uh, one of the known species. Hmm, I don't know, maybe it's still something different. Philippe and his team have already catalogued more than three and a half thousand specimens. Around one and a half thousand new marine species entered into literature every year. At this rate, the process of discovering, verifying and naming all remaining unknown marine species would take more than five centuries. On the other side of the globe, Professor David Rawson is involved in a similar project to collect material from endangered fish species in Britain using a pioneering technique called cryopreservation to create a so-called frozen arc. This is to culture cells from the fin and we can take it back to the lab and we can get cells to grow up from the fin clippings and the like to take. His research will enable future scientists to compare what once lived in the oceans with what lives there now and what will live there in the future. The big concern is that certain groups are particularly vulnerable to extinction and fish probably most of all, of all the vertebrate groups. Something like 30% of them are considered highly vulnerable. Frozen arc is a way of preserving material in a more useful way than we did in the past. So it's a form of banking in banking cells in a state where they can be held for hundreds or thousands of years um, at very, very low temperatures typically liquid nitrogen, which is minus 196 degrees centigrade, so extremely cold temperatures, where in effect, all life activity is, is in suspended animation. It is estimated that most species that become extinct have never been documented by scientists. Philippe and David know that they are in a race against time. I think many nations now recognize that their um, fauna and flora are as valuable to them as their mineral reserves and their land. Um, it's, it's an enormous task to capture everything, but a start has been made, and I think it's, I think it's making us recognize the value of our, of our biology that's around us. And when I was a student, my dream was to discover one new species. And, well, that dream has been fulfilled, I mean, thousands of times. Uh, in fact, nearly everywhere in the world, you, especially in the tropics, there are st still plenty to discover. And my experience with uh, yeah, tropical islands in the Pacific, I, mean, I have seen places early in my career, 20 years later, these habitats were gone. So, yes, there is a race against time. 